Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And shout out to the Black Panther Party for self-defense. Let me say that before we even get started. Huey Newton, Bobby Sill, Kathleen Cleaver, um, uh, Bunchy Carter, John Huggins. Uh, so many, so many to name. Um, so many men and women, you know, put in a lot of work. The Black Panther Party for Self Defense out in Oakland and also in other places, you know, throughout the United States. Omiya Abu Jamal. Um, yeah, just a lot of just a lot of people. All right, and even beyond the United States, there were Black Panther Party chapters internationally. That's something else for us to research. All right, so take a take a look, look into that. All right. Now, in this video, we are going to so I got this, I'm still I'm still dealing with this neti pot. We're doing some neti pot math. I got a couple other videos on neti pot math, right? So, and again, I was using a neti pot because I had I had chronic sinusitis. Then I had surgery to correct the problem. And then as part of the recovery, I had to use the neti pot to like basically clean out my, my nasal passages, right? So you basically pour water in through one nostril and it comes out the other nostril and it like cleans out your, your, nasal, your nasal passageway and all that. All right, it's like irrigation. Nasal irrigation is what they call it. But what I noticed is, Cause I'm always trying to create math problems, you know, cause people always talk about like, math is irrelevant and you know, um, I would have understood it better if it was more relevant when I was in school. So I'm like, cool, I dig it. Right. So a lot of times in my classes, I could have made the math more relevant, but I wasn't as, for whatever reason, I just wasn't as, wasn't able to do it. Wasn't able to make it as relevant early in my career. More recently, I make things very relevant. And especially on this channel, I try to make it as relevant as possible. I could probably make algebra, geometry, and arithmetic problems about almost anything, anything in life that you encounter. But at any rate, I was noticing on this neti pot that eight ounces, this fill line comes up to, it says eight ounces on top and 240 milliliters underneath. So what that basically means is that eight ounces is equivalent to 240 milliliters. All right. So I want us to also be able to convert between milliliters and ounces, milliliters and ounces, ounces, to ounces to milliliters. That's a very important skill to have, not just in a chemistry class or a physics class or a biology class when we're measuring items, but it's just good to be able to do. It's good to be fluent like that with mathematics. So you can like convert back and forth. So check this out. So I have two questions up here. How many milliliters are in 13 ounces? If we know that 240 milliliters is eight ounces. And also how many ounces are 400 milliliters if we know that eight ounces are 240 milliliters. So dig this. This is what we can do. We can basically set up a proportion because if we know that, like in terms of answering the first question, if I know that 240 milliliters and eight ounces are the same thing, I can create a, a fraction. 240 over 8. And then my question is, okay, what fraction is that equal to? It's going to be equal to a fraction that has, because I want to know how many, milliliter, how many milliliters are in 13 ounces. So in this fraction, my ounces are on the bottom or in my denominator. So in this fraction, my ounces are going to be on the bottom also, right? So I got ounces on the bottom, ounces on the bottom, milliliters on top, milliliters on top. Milliliters on top, milliliters on top, ounces on the bottom, ounces on the bottom. That just happens to be how I set it up. If I had set it up a different way with ounces on top and milliliters on the bottom, then that's how it would be in my second fraction also, and the 13 would be up top. But that's not how I happen to set it up. So now, this blank space right here, where the milliliters would go, we don't know how many milliliters that is, not yet. So we're going to pick a variable. I'm going to pick a variable M. M for milliliters. I'm going to just be different. Normally, I would use X, but I just feel like being different. Now, this is our proportion. Right now, one way to do this is the what I like doing is what I call the Malcolm X method. Right, Malcolm X was a great, you know, was one of the influences of many members of the Black Panther Party. Right, um, I would cross cancel using the Malcolm X method, not cross cancel. I should have said that. Cross multiply, cross canceling is something different. That's something we do when we're multiplying fractions. Right, not when there's an equal sign in between two fractions. When we're multiplying fractions and the the numerator and denominator that are diagonal from each other have a, have a, have the same have a, a common factor basically we can cross cancel right meaning we can reduce those numbers that's not what we're doing here we are cross multiplying here so it's gonna look like this we're gonna go diagonal like that we're gonna go diagonal like that so eight times m is gonna be eight m now we're gonna create an equation that does not have a fraction have any fractions in it 
the purpose, one of the benefits of cross multiplying is that we get rid of the, fra of the fractions. So if you're a person that don't like fractions, cool. Cross multiplying using the Malcolm X method, what I call it, because we go into X formation, right? It gets rid of the fractions. Now I got I did eight times M and I got eight M. Now I'm gonna do 240 times 13. So 240 times 13, I'm trying to do this mentally. How would I do this mentally? So 240 times 13, what I would do is, I would, my first thought is to break the 13 down into 10 and three, because 10 is what we call a happy number. Happy, H-A-P-I, like the Happy River in ancient Kemet, what our ancestors called the Nile River, right? A happy number, happy number, happy river, right? So 240 times 10 is going to be 2,400, right? But then you got three more 240s. So 2,400, number two, 240 times three. 240 times three is just 24 times three with a zero attached to it. 24 times three is 72. So 72 with a zero attached to it is 720. So we got 2,400 plus 720. I know 2,400 plus 600 is going to give me 3,000. The difference between 600 and 720 is just 120. So that means I just got to add the extra 120, and I get 3,120. So that means the 240 times 13 is 3,120. Right? Now, please, at home watching this video, please, you know, verify my work. Do 240 times 13 and make sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah. Matter of fact, let me do this again. 240 times 13 is 24 times 10 is 240. Um, well, 240 times 10 is going to be 2,400. And then 240 times 3 is going to be 720. Um, 240, yeah, 600 and 120. Yeah, that should be 3,120. So now I'm solving for M. So 8M equals 3,120. So I'm trying to isolate the M by itself. So I'm trying to get rid of the 8. I get rid of the 8 by doing the opposite of multiplication because this is multiplication. We do the opposite operation. This is a hard and fast rule in algebra. When we want to eliminate something, we do the opposite operation. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide by 8 on the left side, but we got to stay balanced. So we also are going to divide by 8 on the right side. 8 divided by 8 gives us 1. 1 and 1. So 1m over 1, which is just m. Again, 1m over 1, that's just m, because 1m is the same thing as m. And m over 1 is just m. Whenever your denominator is 1, you don't really need it. Right? And whenever your coefficient is one, you don't really need it. All right? That's a that's a math, that's an algebra rule you should memorize. Now, 3120 divided by eight. 3120 divided by eight. Um how do I do this? I mean, I know how to do this, but let me see. I should have worked this out on paper first. Because now I'm about to grab my calculator. Uh as a matter of fact, just for old time's sake, let's do some long division real quick. It can't hurt. So 8 goes into 3 zero times because 8 is too big. 8 goes into 31 three times, right? Because if because 4 times is 32, and that's more than 31, right? So, oh, so, so this, is a little, this, this, this is turning into a, a long division lesson also. All right, cool. So 8 times 3 is 24. Remember, we do DMS. We divide, multiply, subtract, drop the number, right? And then we're going to do 31 minus 24, which is going to be 7. And then we're going to bring the 2 down. That's going to be 72. 8 goes into 72 evenly, that's 9 times, because 8 times 9, I know my multiplication facts, I know 8 times 9 is 72. So 8 times 9 is 72, so I'm going to write the 72 down here, boom, subtract, I got 0, then I'm going to bring this 0 down, 8 goes into 0, 0 times, so that means that my answer is 390. Now let me check that, let me check that to make sure, 300 times 8 is 2400, 90 times 8 is 720, yeah, 2400 plus 720 is 3120, yeah. So that means that, there are 390 milliliters in 13 ounces, or there are 13 ounces in 390 milliliters. And that's how you do it, right? You set up your proportion, and then you can just cross multiply. That's one way to do it. That's not the only way to do it. You don't have to cross multiply. Um, we could have multiplied by 13 on both sides, and then multiplied by eight on both sides. We could have did that, right, to get rid of the fractions, all right? But cross multiplying, what cross multiplying does is it, it it takes care of those two steps in one step. That's what cross multiplying does. So cross multiplying with a Malcolm X method is essentially a shortcut. It takes care of those two steps of multiplying both sides by 13 to get rid of the 13, and also multiplying by eight on both sides to get rid of the eight, right? It, it consolidates those two steps into one step. All right, now let's do the second question. Let me put a check mark right here because we did that one. How many ounces are in 400 milliliters? So let's go back to the same original relationship 240 milliliters is eight ounces so we got 
What we got? We got 240 over 8. 240 over 8 is equal to... So we got milliliters on top, ounces on the bottom. Milliliters on top, ounces on the bottom. So in the next fraction, we're going to keep consistent. We got we to gotta stay consistent, right? If I got milliliters on top and ounces on the bottom in one fraction, I need to have milliliters on top and ounces on the bottom in my next fraction. So my milliliters are going to be 400. So that's that. And then the ounces are my unknown, right? So I'm going to use Z because Z is in the symbol for ounces. Right? And now I'm trying to solve for Z, so I'm going to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to, again, Malcolm X with it. Cross multiply with it. 240 times Z is 240Z. 8 times 400. I know that. I could do that easy. I'm going to just pretend those zeros aren't there. And I'm going to do 8 times 4. That's a math trick. It's a math trick that I want you to use. 8 times 4 is 32. And then I'm going to just attach those two zeros to 32. So I'm going to have 3200. So now I got 240Z is equal to 3,200. Now I'm trying to solve for Z, so I got to get rid of 240. I get rid of 240 by doing the opposite operation from what 240 is involved in. What is 240 and Z doing? What are they doing? They're multiplying by each other. 240Z means 240 times Z. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to divide. So I'm going to divide by 240. I got to stay balanced. If I divide on the left side, I got to divide on the right side. So I'm going to do divide by 240. These cancel out, turn into 1s. So I got 1z over 1. 1z is the same thing as z. z over 1 is the same thing as z. So that's why this becomes z. In case anybody is wondering, right? How did 1, what happened to the 1 up here? What happened to the 1 down here? Because 1z over 1 is the same thing as z. Because 1z is the same thing as z. 1z means that's how many z's you got. You got one of them. So you don't need to write the coefficient 1. If your denominator is 1, that means you're just dividing by 1. What happens when you divide by 1? What's z divided by 1? Just Z, right? How many ones can fit into Z? Z ones. That's how many, right? And if you divide by one, the dividend is going to be your answer when one is your divisor. So eight divided by one is eight because that's how many ones can fit into eight, eight of them. All right, same thing with variables. How many, how many ones can fit into Z? Z is the amount of ones that can fit into Z, all right? Now, 3,200 3, divided by 240. Now, what I would do when I first look at this is I say, all right, well, I'm going to cancel out any zeros I can. So if zeros match up, like this zero and this zero, they match up, so I cancel them out. I can't cancel out this zero because there's no more zeros down here. Again, I cannot cancel out this zero because there's no more zeros down here. I'm doing 320 divided by 24. So now I got to think, all right, let me, let me see, 320 and 24. So I know, matter of fact, I'm going to just, I like long division. I'm going to just long division with it. So now I got 24 into 320. How many 24s can fit into 32? One. What's 24 times one? 24. Subtract. I get eight. I bring the zero down. Um, 24 goes into 80 three times. Oh, we're about to have a decimal. We're about to have a decimal. 24 goes into 83 times. 24 times three is 72. That's going to be eight. Boom. Bring the zero, add the zero, bring the zero. Notice how I put the decimal point right there. Notice how I put the decimal point right there. When I got to add extra zeros or attach extra zeros to the dividend, you got to put a decimal point in your quotients. All right, 24 goes in there. I'm going to keep getting threes over and over again. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to keep getting threes over and over again. So this is going to be, what, 13.3? Repeating? Because see what's happening? I keep getting 80s, and 24 goes into 83 times. It keeps going into 83 times. That's not going to change. I'm going to keep getting 80 minus 72, 8, and I'm going to keep adding zeros and bringing them down. Keep getting 80 over and over. So it's going to be 13.3, or you could just say 13.33. Um, so, yeah, Z is going to be 13.33. Not 13.3, because 13.3 is 3 tenths. 13.33 is 1 third. 0.33 is one third. So if it's three repeating, that's 0.33. That's one third. 0.3 by itself, that's three tenths. That's something different. That's like the difference between in terms of money, right? One third is 33 cent. Three tenths is 30 cent. It's the difference between 33 cent and 30 cent. Now you might think, well, that's nominal. That don't really mean that's not a significant difference. Well, the difference between 30 cent and 33 cent may not seem significant, but what if you had to multiply that by 10 million? 
when you get into the tens of millions, then it gets real significant. Them three pennies matter. Them three pennies start really adding up real quick. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it matters, right? So we got 13.33 ounces. All right, so that means that 400 milliliters is equivalent to 13.33 ounces or 13 and one-third ounces. It's equivalent to that. All right, and this is how we do unit conversions, right? Um, you know, we just, we basically, we set up a proportion, set up a proportion correctly with two fractions on each side of the equal sign, Malcolm X method with it, cross multiply, and then solve for the variable. All right. Let me make sure this is right though before I, before I close out. 240 times 13.3, 240 times 10 would be 2400. And then three more would be 3120. And then one third of 240 is going to be 80. So 3120 plus 80 is 3200. Okay, cool. That's a good answer. 13.33 ounces. Now you could put the horizontal bar to show that the threes repeat forever if you want to. Um, but 0.33 is sufficient. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so yeah, this is just some, um, some math I wanted to do based on, you know, using a nutty pot, you know, but these are just some skills we should have, you feel me? So yeah, make sure you practice these skills and I'll see y'all on another video. Peace.